My name is Delia McKenzie and I am with Integrate Solutions. I am really looking forward to joining Prosper on the Prosperity Show. We are an offshoring and consulting company and we help businesses to grow whilst reducing the cost of their labor by 60 or 70 percent and increasing their profits. And we do this by matching really talented staff offshore with our clients here in Australia and, and internationally. So I'm really looking forward to being on the show to sharing what the steps are involved in setting that up successfully so that you can guarantee a success from having your staff offshore. Now, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we bring you insights and strategies from experts in the world of business and entrepreneurship. In this episode, I'm thrilled to be speaking to Delia McKenzie, who is a sales and business development uh, representative at Integrate. Now, Delia, how are you doing today? Hey, Prosper. I'm really well. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Great stuff. Nice to be here. I can't wait to dive into what you guys do at Integrate. And for those that are at home, um, Integrate is a fast growing offshore company uh, that's based here in Australia, but has staff in the Philippines. Now with a focus on balance and um, you know helping businesses start, scale and grow, I'll be asking Delia what it is that they do at Integrate and how they have um, you know um, started helping small to medium businesses get stuff from offshore um, you know, uh, resources so that they can create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable, and especially helping your business run smoothly. Now, Dillian, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got involved with Integrate. So I'm South African and have been in, in Melbourne now for about 17 years. And I actually came from an accounting background and then worked in sales and account management uh, when I came to Australia, but for corporates like Canon. Uh, and then I was drawn to integrate because I sort of saw just how businesses were struggling to find staff and, um, and, and how they were struggling to afford the different staff and the different roles that they were looking for. And integrate was a growing company and a really exciting opportunity to be involved in placing good people together. So, you know, I know you're from Zimbabwe and, and I saw in South Africa that there's a lot of unemployment and you certainly they're fantastic people there who have got degrees and double degrees but they just can't find work um, and that's the same in in Zim in places like the Philippines India Nepal there there's so many countries that have great people and they're qualified they speak good English but there's not the resource there's not the demand for their um their skills and so I saw this as a great way of connecting people in Australia who struggle to find the staff with people uh, overseas and integrate set up in a way that it makes it really easy for um, for clients in Australia and worldwide to work with staff offshore in the Philippines. Absolutely. And it's really interesting that you mentioned how there's so much talent out there that has not been sort of matched up with, um, you know, relevant opportunities for them to, um, you know, start their lives or to actually help the businesses in the first world. So what is it that then sets Integrate apart from any other offshoring solution, like say maybe Fiverr or other companies that are uh, on in Australia? In Australia. Just to touch quickly on that, another thing that just drew me to Integrate was you get to help two people. You know, we help the staff in terms of they really need the job to support their families and to support themselves. And a role with an international company like Australia is worth so much more to them in terms of um, it's a, it doesn't seem like a good salary necessarily for an Australian because it's 30 or 40 percent of what an Australian would pay for a, a role here. But that's a great salary in those countries and, and they do support their children and sometimes their parents. So you feel it's a, it's really rewarding to give them that opportunity and then rewarding on the side of that you're helping the client get back their time and, and be able to grow their business. And then in their own way, be able to invest back in their families because they're not working 24 hours a day, sort of, um, or maybe not 24, but such long hours. So they've got time 
to to grow their business but also have time for their families and their own personal relationships so that relationship thing was another a main attraction to to this sort of work but to your other question Integrate um, was set up in 2018 and Adam Conrad, who set it up, has got sort of certainly more than 20 years experience learning from the big corporates. So he worked in England for Deutsche and Accenture, setting up sort of their operations and offshore teams, and then in Australia for ANZ. So I think the strength of Integrate is the processes and procedures we have in place so that nothing falls through the cracks, that communication is really strong right from the start in finding out what role you would want to offshore. So making sure we get that job description right, finding the right people, doing the, the checking, and then the onboarding, sort of the, the number of stages that we really have a strong processes and procedures in place. But then it's not just a date, a sort of a, a recruitment service. It's not just a find you someone and forget. It's also the um, setting KPIs and managing performance going forwards so that you are getting the best from your staff um, once they've once we found them. And it's it's communication as well. It's uh, making sure that you as an onshore client is able to communicate clearly and there's not a breakdown just because of the cultural differences. You know, we do a lot of cultural training and setting up an operating rhythm, new way, a new way of working. So it's um, it's the strength, I think, is in our processes to to make it easy for the client Fantastic. and for the staff member. <laughs> Absolutely. And like you mentioned earlier on there, Dilly, um, how obviously coming from a different country, uh, you know, like Zimbabwe, where there's certain ways of doing things and there's certain um, ways that also things are done here um, in Australia, and you also alluded uh, in your last response about the cultural sort of difference. What is it that you actually do with, um, you know, the the Philippine, um, you know, resources in order for them to be fully integrated to the way things are done in Australia? And I'll give you um, a reference to, um, you know, my coming to Australia. I faced and, um, you know, uh, was... Uh, first hand introduced to the tall poppy syndrome way of doing things here in Australia and and sort of what 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 is it that integrate does in terms of that cultural um you know sort of integration that you you met you talked about so part of the onboarding and a lot of it's educating the client as well so the education needs to come from both sides and I think um sometimes people who are looking to offshore, mistake that 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 they're uh it's like a, a button that they can switch and the resource will just start working and start delivering you know the day after they're employed so it's educating the, the clients that it's a like you're employing onshore it's a process of understanding them as individuals and um and then we do do as i say the cultural training is communication and language so for example the disposition of the philippines is very much to be a pleaser to do the right thing and to say yes to everything that they that their um, employee or wants them to do. So we sort of teach teach the the clients what they're likely to say yes to in certain situations. Would they um, would they actually answer truthfully or would they just want to you know say what they thought the client would want them to hear? So teaching how to ask open ended questions to make sure that things have been fully understood, and then from the other side, we training the um, staff to know what Australian work looks like and how we communicate in Australia. And that's an ongoing process. There's initial training at the start, but because all of the staff that we on board have got a team leader, that person is also well versed in Australian culture and they can give them sort of ongoing um, education around best ways of communicating and best, best practices of um, being open with the employee um, in Australia, as well as sort of being honest to how they're feeling. So it, it is an ongoing process, but we find the education is actually a lot as from the client side as much as the offshore staff, so that they they uh, can communicate in a way that both understand and both get the best results. Absolutely. And, and I love that about that integration, because there's just so much 
difference that happens. I mean, within my household, you know, <laughs> my wife is Italian, I'm Zimbabwean, we've got Australian kids and just trying to wrangle those cats together. You can imagine what it's like when there's uh, emotions, money and productivity involved. So they, I'm happy that you guys have that ongoing, um, you know, sort of uh, teaching out there. Now, you really touch... Yeah, you really sorry, I was just going to say it's it's understanding what their drivers are and what their motivators are. And, and for the Philippines, their drivers are to do the right thing, but they love reward and, and, and recognition and positive reinforcement. So if the clients just understand that and they communicate in that way rather than kind of with a big stick, um, which scares them and they sort of don't want to lose face and might suddenly resign and you're not sure why. And it's just because you've communicated an area they need to improve in a way that they take offense. But if you just use different words and phrase things a bit differently, it would be taken on as a as a positive thing rather than like, oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Absolutely. See, you did mention one thing that I've also encountered, which is the people pleasing um, you know, aspect where you might have an offshore resource and you ask them, okay let's do this. And they're like, yeah, let's do that. Even during their after hours, even during the weekends, they just take on and on um, work. One of the things that you do is you ensure that these offshore employees are productive and are delivering high quality work. What, what does that mean? Um, you know, in, in terms of what Integrate would actually uh, enable, you know, your clients to actually start you fully utilizing the resources that they get from you? So when we send out a, an advertisement to employ based on the client's job description, the staff have a number of interviews. So first our HR would interview them. Then they have an aptitude test, which is a comprehensive sort of inductive, deductive reasoning, numeracy, literacy. And then they would have an interview by their future team leader. So this person is a fantastic resource that's part of Integrate, but they're based in the Philippines. And the first part of their role is this interview to make sure that they feel that they can work with the candidate and that the candidate is a good, good for the, the role. Um, then all those screen candidates get interviewed by the client and they choose um, the right one that's a good fit for them. And firstly, that's really important because if the client is part of the choosing, it means that, um, you know, they can decide on someone who sort of aligns with their values, the direction of the business, the interests. You know, if you're a music company, you, might, you want somebody who's got an interest in music. If you're a mortgage company, you would probably want someone who had an interest in property. So so the, the client chooses the staff. But then the ongoing performance um, is very much helped by the team leader, because while th there's a portion of time where we're doing the background checking, police health checking and and setting the IT up for the staff member. But in that time, the, the team leader would work with the client to set KPIs. So before the staff member begins their first day, it's very clearly established what the goals are so that both um, the client and the staff member know what good looks like and we've got clear targets. Then it's the role of the team leader to monitor those. And in the beginning, the probation period is 150 days, which we call the hypercare period. And they would monitor 30, 60, 90, and 150 days. Um, and at any of those times, if there's not the performance being, being met, the team leader helps to uh, give additional coaching or advise on where uh, the staff needs extra support. So it, it means that it's it's not getting lost and there's no accountability. We, we very much work to keep the staff member accountable, but then also to keep the client accountable for clear instructions. So they need to provide these are the instructions and these are the goals so that the client, the staff members got clear targets and can be um, can be managed and, and sort of helped with performance around those those targets. So I think it's that clearness of what's expected and then having the processes in place so that the staff can achieve um, the targets is what the key to frust um, you know not having frustration on both sides. Fantastic. Um, you did mention obviously you've got that incubation period of 150 days where you're really hand holding both the client and the um, you know the 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 employee. So is that during that sort of honeymoon phase everybody is getting to know each other, liking each other and trusting each other. What sort of 
metrics are we measuring? You did mention there's a few KPIs there. And how do we measure success of these, um, you know, offshoring um, initiatives that, that, that you're doing? So that would depend quite a lot on the role. Um, so say you would, if you had an administration role, because we're not restricted to industry, we employ a staff member for each client. Um, there are a number of different roles. We, we do focus on financial services. So accounting, insurance, mortgage broking and financial planning. Those two mortgage and financial planning are actually the two I look after the most. Um, and then, but there's a lot of administration roles, marketing, engineering. So it does depend a bit on what the role is as to what the KPI would be. So say for a mortgage processing role, you might be a, a loan um, loan support officer. So you would be helping a, a mortgage broker manage the loan application from sort of the first communication with the client through collecting the data and information about the client then working out um, what sort of a loan could be serviced, and then all the way through to settlement. So the KPIs would be how many files you were able to look at in a day and how far through the process you could take them. And then that would be different to sort of a marketing person who might have a target of um, producing marketing uh, LinkedIn, or it could be social media marketing posts, it could be brochures and artwork. So it is very industry specific, but it it's just a a way of um, setting targets and we try not to set too too high targets to start off with because it's the same as if you were employing someone onshore you would have that uh, getting to know each other and start start slower with success with the idea of you know as you get familiar with the role and familiar with your responsibilities you're able to to pick up the pace on how you get um, how many of the files or how many you know marketing bits marketing material um items you're able to produce absolutely so it is industry specific absolutely since you you are sort of you know touching across a lot of industries you know like you did mention accounting marketing um and other you know mortgage brokers and other different industries can you just share with us some sort of a success story of how you integrated an employee and a client and um there's a happily ever after based on the work that you've done for them so we very much um, encourage businesses not to think of having an, an offshore or an onshore team. The biggest success, say, for a mortgage broking firm is when they have uh, their mortgage brokers onshore, but those people need support offshore. So what the goal is and what we've been able to achieve is if, if they can write down and work out which part of the process they don't necessarily have to be doing, the bits that keep them at their computer, um, that they that stops them from going out and actually seeing their clients and improving the client experience and stops them from networking and doing all the activities they need to do to grow their business. We find that you, um, we certainly had one recently where they could eliminate 40% of the tasks they were doing and get someone offshore to do those processing tasks. And then that's that's two days a week. So they were like, this is amazing. I've now got two days a week extra that um, I'm still getting through the work because someone else is doing it, but I'm able to attend those network events. I'm, I can see more face-to-face -face time with my clients. And then if the clients are happy, that's usually your best referral. So investing in your client time is so much worthwhile. Sorry, so much more worthwhile than investing time behind your laptop. So they're like, this is amazing. And I'm actually not even working long hours anymore. I can get home and, and get my kids to bed and and read them a story. And, and I've got just a bit more of that balance back in my life, which um, is so valuable from a mental health perspective, because if your business isn't sustainable, it, it doesn't actually matter what you're earning. And if you can be wildly successful financially, but if everything else falls apart, you don't end up happy. So you have to have to and, and that's the biggest reward is seeing these business owners going oh my gosh I'm so glad I met you it's changed my life I have a life <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and uh, Dilia if some business owner is sitting at the edge of their chair right now really excited about what it is that you're talking about and wanting to get their life back what will be the best way to get a hold of you so best way is through our website which is integrate.com.au 
And on the first page, just up to the right, you can book a call. You know, everybody, as I say, is different. They're looking for different roles. So booking a call is a good place to start. And I can answer all your doubts, fears, and concerns and try and, and just make see if offshoring makes sense for where you are at, um, and where your business is at at the moment. And we also do, Adam has written a book, which is um, called The Myths of Offshoring. It's the... Or is offshoring right for us? I don't know if that's in focus or not, but uh, that yes. is uh, on our website. And for for the business owner who hasn't really decided if it's the right thing for you, then it's a good place to start because it just answers sort of the key key questions um, about offshoring and whether it it could be a good solution for you. And we're happy to post that out and 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 let you you know just understand a little bit more. Absolutely. And, and yes, with the way things, that. yes, absolutely. And with the way things have gone now, we now have a remote first sort of approach to working and it, you know, it will make sense to find resources that are out there um, that can actually be either cheaper, better, faster than um, somebody that could be on the ground. But, you know, as, as with anything else, you did mention people have doubts, fears, and concerns, you know, when it comes to integrating with people overseas, you know, we are seeing on the TV things are happening in other countries. We might just assume that will be what is happening, um, that what would happen if we invite, um, you know, foreign people into our businesses and integrate them uh, into what it is that we're doing. So what sort of advice would you give to a business who's considering offshoring as a way to drive growth and, and and efficiency, but they're still umming and ahhing, not really sure and not really certain that, um, you know, this might be the best way forward for them. I think the first thing for businesses is to have a look at the providers. So there are a lot of offshore providers out there, but they offer a different service in terms of how they find the right people. And finding the right people is key, whether you're looking onshore or offshore, because it does come down to the individual and how how that person is able to perform in the role that, that you are looking for. Uh, a lot around the security is the IT. So setting up an IT, uh, giving them a laptop. So some people look to go direct to the Philippines, and that's totally possible, but it's a lot more risk because then often the Filipinos are providing their own equipment or they go out and buy it and you've got no real control over what systems are on the device. So very important to work with an offshore partner who provides the equipment. So Integrate, for example, would give them the laptop, an additional monitor, a headset, mouse and keyboard. And then we have a full IT team offshore who would work with the client or their IT team onshore and set up the systems and the security. So from a device perspective, we lock down the computer, like the USB is disabled. They don't have access to any other internet sites or emails like Gmail or Hotmail. All they can see is, and, and some roles don't require the internet, but if you have a marketing role, you might need access to some you know, internet sites. But then the staff member would have a log on into your systems and they would log on using the same multi-factor authentication or, or security that you have for your onshore staff. They log on offshore and they see into your systems the parts that you give them access to and they save into those systems. So from the devices wiped, the hard drives wiped every few hours. Um, so it means that location isn't, you're not at more risk because the information is staying in your systems. Um, so it's very much like setting somebody up remotely from Mentone or Manila. It's it's setting up those that security on the device, and and you know that it's only your staff member uh, and what in your systems on the device. They're not using it for anything else. Exactly. And that, that's the main question, and 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 that you know it's, it's all around cyber security as well. It then comes down to education, and we do cyber education for all of our new staff members, but we encourage our clients to again, treat their offshore staff just like they would their onshore staff. And if you're doing cyber awareness or education for your onshore staff, make sure the offshore staff are included in that because um, the closer that they assimilate and feel part of your onshore team, the you know the better the relationship works. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. And I can tell the passion that you have in, in, in your role and how you are literally helping 
uh, other people be, do, and have a happier existence, especially the people that you're employing. Like you said earlier on, you're really making a difference in the world. So on behalf of our audience here, I just really want to um, you know, acknowledge that and thank you for the efforts that you're putting out there. Now, as we wrap up this episode of the Online Frustrating Experience and uh, show today, I just wanted to thank um, Delia Mackenzie for sharing a valuable insights and strategies with us. Now, through her work at Integrate, we have noticed that she's helping countless business owners and, um, you know, their employees to actually drive growth and efficiency by leveraging the untapped potential of global uh, talent. If you um wanting to, you know, see how you can actually create a business that's profitable and enjoyable, like what Delia says, you know, peace of mind is the best uh, gift you can give to yourself okay so thank you so much for tuning in to the online prosperity experience we'll see you in the next episode and once again delia thank you thank you so much for your time today thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you and and your audience and yeah really enjoyed being on the show fantastic